What's up guys, my name is Chris and I'm bringing you my 13th pickups video here in the collecting saga. So strap in and get ready to rock and roll into the atmosphere. There's definitely a pretty good range of quality in the titles I'm about to show you. On one end of the spectrum, we've got stuff that I'm really not excited to play at all. And on the other, we've got some stuff that I've been waiting to pick up and play for quite some time. Let's do this. The first three games I'm going to show you guys today came from Half Price Books. I had a buy two, get one free coupon. So I picked up for the GameCube. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2, used to play this game a ton back in the day, because back then this was actually the only Budokai game I owned. I had rented the first one, and I didn't own the third one, but I remember playing that one with some of my friends and just having a blast. The second game from that batch was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Have not played this one yet. I know the quality is a little mixed on some of these games, but I'll still be checking it out soon. And the best find of that little visit to Half Price Books was Crash Bandicoot Warped, and they had this priced at 10 bucks. So I think I got Harry Potter for free, but regardless, I think I paid about $15, $17 after tax, something like that for all three of those games. A few days later, possibly that very same weekend, I visited a Goodwill, and I stopped in and got a copy of Medal of Honor Warfighter. Haven't played this yet. I assume that the quality might be a little on the questionable side, but regardless, I think it was $3, so I went ahead and grabbed it because it was still sealed. I've since opened it. And at that same Goodwill, I also got Your Shape Fitness Evolve 2013 for the Wii U. I'm not necessarily going for a complete Wii U set like my buddy Retro Games Vinyl and Beer is. You should definitely go check his channel out if you haven't already, but I'm not saying no to Wii U titles as I see them because I do think it's going to become one of those systems that is a little bit more challenging to collect for down the road because there's such a low install base of hardware and the software has been pretty limited, especially on the third party side. So definitely happy to go ahead and grab this anyway. And on my way home from that Goodwill, I also stopped in at a thrift store and grabbed Hot Wheels World Race. I mainly grabbed this because it was $5 and it was complete. There were a couple of other GameCube games that were there, but they were in worse condition and a couple of them were more than five bucks. So I passed on those, but I did pick this one up because I didn't have it. A week or two after that, I had a 10% off coupon at another half price book. So I stopped in just to see what they had and I picked up a copy of Twisted Metal 3 for PS1. Sometime around my birthday back in late March, I discovered that I had a GameStop coupon as well as some Power Up Rewards member points that I needed to use. So I stopped in when they were having a sale and maximized what I could find, getting some cheap games and a couple of other games that I've really wanted for a while and just have held off on. The first one being Game of Thrones, a Telltale game series. I've already played through this, really, really enjoyed it. I know some of the reviews were kind of mixed and I can see why. I don't want to spoil anything if you haven't played this, but I really enjoyed the first season of The Walking Dead as well as The Wolf Among Us. So if you like adventure games with kind of mystery elements and pretty high quality voice acting and good storytelling, you should definitely check this one out. On that same visit, I picked up Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. This was a game that I'd been kind of following back before its release, and it seemed like an interesting concept. So I think I grabbed this one for around 10 bucks, maybe a little less. These next two PS3 games were super cheap. I think I got one or maybe both of them for under a dollar possibly. And the first one is Singularity. I really don't know much about this game. I know that I've seen it in GameStop stores and elsewhere time and time again. Reading the back of the case, it seems kind of like an interesting premise and the enemy designs look kind of cool. So you could say I'm keeping my expectations curbed. <laughs> as well as Syndicate on the PS3. The other two games I picked up on that GameStop run were Legend of K Anniversary. This seemed like a pretty cool set to have. I never played these on the PS2. The interesting thing is that it comes in a white case, despite being for Wii U, and I've checked online and that's actually the way it's supposed to come. Weird. It's really not that weird. And the other one that I got at that time is the one that by far I'm most excited to finally own, and that's Mario Kart 8. I've been having a ton of fun playing this, unlocking courses and other racers albeit most of them being baby versions of their adult counterparts in the Mario universe. But this game seriously is so well crafted. It controls well, the visuals are beautiful, the sound editing is great, the courses are a ton of fun. This might be my new favorite Mario Kart game. It's definitely in the top three. So if you own a Wii U and you haven't yet picked this one up, definitely add it to your list. And before I show you the last few games that I picked up, I wanted to take a quick sidestep and show you the Amiibo that I've collected. Sometime toward the end of 2015, I forget now, it feels like forever ago, 
I pre-ordered a couple of Amiibo from GameStop. And after adding these next three that I'm going to show you, there's really only a couple more that I really want. So I'm getting to a point where I think I might do an Amiibo collection video, if that'd be something you guys are interested in. Let me know in the comments below if you'd care to see something like that. Anyway, when my pre-order from GameStop finally came in, I added Ryu, as well as Roy. I always really liked him back in Super Smash Bros. Melee, so I was pretty pumped when they announced that he was going to be coming to Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS also. And lastly, my most recent Amiibo acquisition came simply from, I think, Target. I was just in there. I kind of missed the boat when he first came out. I wasn't excited about him as I was when Ness came out back in, I think, Wave 3, so that automatically gives you a hint as to who this next one's going to be, and it's going to be Lucas from Mother 3. I like his design fairly well. I admittedly haven't played Mother 3 yet, which is kind of a bummer, and from everything I've heard, Mother 3 is a must-play on the Game Boy Advance, so I'm definitely excited to check that one out. All right, guys, we've come to the last three games that I'm going to show you, and I'm aware that some of you may be thinking, Yo, Chris, where's the retro games? And to that I respond, I assure you, my good friends, I do have retro games to show you. Personally, for my part, I'm pretty proud that I held these off to the very end because, let's face it, retro is the best <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, guys, these final three games came from a buy two, get one free sale at Vintage Stock. I'm really excited to add all three of them, especially two of them though. The first one is Kirby's Avalanche on the Super Nintendo. I really enjoy puzzle games like this. This one is kind of simple, admittedly, but it's definitely fun and addicting if you pop it in and play for a while. I'm a big fan of Kirby and this cartridge is in great condition, so definitely happy to add this one. This next one I'm least excited to get of these three, but I'm still happy to have it because I love the Super Nintendo, and that's Where in Time is Carmen San Diego. I played this for a little bit and it's definitely a dated interface. It's not as fun as modern adventure style games are, but it's still a cool one to have. I have really fond memories of playing Carmen San Diego back on my old PC way back in the day. And I really think some of those Carmen San Diego games and games like Oregon Trail and such were some of the best edutainment games that have ever been made. And once again, this cartridge is in great condition, so glad to have this one too. And the final game of this pickups video is one that I've been after for quite a while. I remember seeing a copy and passing it up back in late 2014 even, and just because it was priced higher than I wanted to pay, and this time it was affordable thanks to the coupon. And it's another Super Nintendo game published by Squaresoft, and it's The Secret of Evermore. It's a quality game. I know it doesn't quite have the same level of prestige as games like Chrono Trigger or Secret of Mana. Regardless, I'm really eager to pop this cartridge in and lose some hours into it. Well guys, that concludes this episode of The Collecting Saga and I'm really glad you stopped by to check it out. If this was your first Cross Chop video and you liked what you saw, please subscribe. Thanks for hanging out at Cross Chop today and play heavy.